Welcome back, friends, to the shop. Man, have I got a good project for you guys today. Fresh back from Platt Electric, one of my favorite stores. You guys, always, you guys should probably know by now that I'm a, a closet electrician, or I, or, or I wish I would have been one. <laughs> wish I would have been one as much electrical work as I like doing. I'm going to uh, share with you one of my favorite things I've ever built for the shop. I built one of these years ago, and I absolutely love it. And it's a, it's a basically, it's a no compromise power distribution cord. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we'll call it. Or a no comp compromise extension cord that will last you the rest of your life. But we're actually going to take this, this idea that I did years ago, and we're going to drag it into the 21st century by adding USB support. When I said no compromise, I meant it. This is all US rubber and, 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 and American steel <laughs> for the most part. So extension cords, we all have them, we all use them, right? It's hard to find a good one. The last few that I've bought have been absolute garbage. They're thin, uh, they have uh, low quality ends that wear out really quickly pretty soon. You know, you're you're uh, putting your things in there, not making connection. I mean, they're just, they're hard to wrap up. They don't coil well because they use a cheap vinyl on and on and on. And they're just so thin. They're so thin. I mean, you can buy good extension cords, but most people don't. You're going to have to pay for them. And, you know, a good extension cord, even a 50 footer is going to run you about $100 or so. So for about $50 more than that, 100 and a half or so, you can build one that is going to be just amazing from the best ingredients, right? And the whole thing where you got to start is you got to have the right cable. And man, this is my, I, I, this stuff gives me the fizz. I don't even know what it's called, but it's, it's, it's really similar to the, to the black stuff you see on your uh, welding leads, right? And you ever notice how supp supp supple it is, how it doesn't uh, really get stiff in cold weather. It coils just beautifully. When you, th when you throw it out, it lays, it goes over bumps. I mean, it's just delightful, delightful stuff. The downside is, is, is it's expensive. This is what you're going to see like on really high-end uh, uh, power tools. You'll see this from Milwaukee where your cheap tools will have that garbage vinyl instead of the nice rubber. So I think it's worth the investment. Now this is 50 feet of 10-3 cable. When you see that number, when you see your wire numbers, you'll see a 10 and then a slash and a 3. That's telling you two things. The 10 is the size. That means that there's a 10 wire in there. That's the size of the copper or the aluminum wire. Just for example, just for your own fun, the, the extension cord that you're going to get in most, and this would be a good one, this is a number 12 wire. But the cheaper ones, like you're going to find at Walmart and stuff, that's probably even going to be a number 14 wire, right? Very, very thin. Here, just for example, so this is a 14 wire, and as the number gets smaller, the wire gets bigger. This is a number 6 wire right there, and this is a, a zero or an aught right there, giving an idea. So just some of, the, some of the different sizes. When you see the three number in there, that tells you that there are three separate wires inside the sheathing. So we can see right there, there are three. There's a white, a green, and a black. So when you're building your extension cord, that what size do you want? Well, a 12, you can, you can save a lot of money by buying this in a 12. Or even, uh, uh, but if you want to buy a 10, like this is, which is really heavy, it gives you more versatility because you could use this as a welding lead. You could use this as a 240 lead. So it's worth the extra few bucks to go with the bigger wire for a shop cord. If you don't mind lugging around the extra weight and size, I would go ahead and do it. You'll forget the 30 bucks you saved with the smaller wire uh, when you have that versatility. So that's what we're going to go with. This is a big, heavy cable that's going to do really, really well. 50 feet. 100 feet cords are too long. They're unhandy, they're miserable, they're the devil to wrap, and I just wouldn't have one. Whenever I have one, I cut it in half and put ends on it because it's just unmanageable. Now, when you're picking out your box, make sure when you're looking for this, in addition to the round edges, make sure it's got this bump in it. You see that right there? That's always a problem when you're mounting these things. And back in the day, they were flat because you have a ground screw that's going to go through here, and it used to stick out the other side and, and be a big hindrance, and it doesn't sit flat. It's just it's, it's nasty. So make sure you get one of these. It has that bump in there that compensates for that ground screw, right? Okay, also, where are we coming in? If we look at these, we have these are, uh, Dad used to call these things slugs. We got half inch and three quarter or three quarter and one. I'm not sure which is which. We have a big strain reliever here, right? So this guy is going to be, he's going to take the big one, right? And we want it right in the center. We don't want it on the side. We want it on the center right there. So you can see these are oriented in different ways just for that very reason. So we'll take and uh, knock our slug out. And then our strain reliever 
is going to go in like this right here. All right, very simple. This electrical stuff, you just got to follow the rules, man. It's not, not complicated. We have a black, a white, and a green, right? Our black is always hot, right? So this should be in your tool kit. You need one of these, a little stripper. This should be in every professional homeowner's kit. If you guys want, let me know in the comments. I'll go over my basic kit here that will do just about everything. Now, the number 12 wire, sometimes these things have little holes you can fit in the back. This is actually a really nice one here. And there's also strip gauges on these things right here. So if you look on the back, it'll tell you and I don't ha can't see very well, green, orange, it'll tell you how far to strip it. I don't know anyone actually uses that, but, uh, but that's, that's the way it goes. So you're going to have black and you're going to have silver right there. You see you've got, you've got silver and gold. Excuse, not, not, I don't mean black. Gold is always hot, uh, in, um, at least in this state right here. So I always remember it by black gold. Black always goes to gold, right? So we're going to put about a 6-inch piece of that number 12 wire on there. It's solid copper wire there. And then over here, on the silver side, you're going to put a white piece. And even if this is going to be true for all of your you know, plugs that aren't GFI, just your standard plugs, this is going to be the way that they're configured. Just make sure, do you see I have a little bit of copper sticking out right there? If you want to get super anal, you can trim that off. Also, as a fun fact here, I'll just show you, and I didn't know this until a long time ago, I used to, uh, I used to grab the end of these and twist these into a, a, a hook like this, right? And you'd hook it over the screw, you know, sometimes that's the way you have to do it. Well, I recently learned that this hole is what this hole is for right here. I think, I think that's what it's for. Um, it seems to make the perfect bend. If you just go into that hole, it gives you that perfect bend. Uh, that goes right around and clamps into those. But with this style, we don't really need that. Now, this is the important part. If you're going to do this style, make sure that you, the bend goes to the right. Do you see how I did that? Now, the reason why that's important is that once you put that in there, you can take your little nippers here and fold that around so, you have a, so it's really on there. And the reason why the fish hook goes to the right is that when you tighten this, now it acts to tighten it and to close the fish hook rather than open it the other way. And now our plug basically is almost made up. That's, that's almost half of it right there. Okay, now these two are connected, right? White to white, white to silver, black to gold. I understand there's cleaner, easier ways to do these with copper ferrules and two into one and all that, but you know, as a professional homeowner, we don't always go about following the rules. First things first, see these little wings right here? In applications in the metal boxes like this, these are, there's a cut in there. These are designed, you can just bend them and they'll snap off or just cut them. These are designed to be removed. My granddad, when I was going through his old box, boxes for you know, bolts and parts and stuff, he had saved these things and had used them for washers. <laughs> That's a... Uh, Man, that's taking frugality to a whole new level there, I'd say. Just like in our box, we got our three wires here, right? We got our same, even the same colors. Now, our Chinese finger trap. Probably should have fed this through before, huh? Boy, these things really hold. You can literally hang this box from a light fixture or anything from ceiling the ceiling with this. Yeah, don't uh, don't do what I did there. It's kind of a small hole there. Bolt these on to the switch plate cover. Oh man, this is giving me the fizz. Look at that. Look at that. We're going to talk a little bit about application. Now that is, oh, that is nice. I look up, I've got to tighten my jam nut there. Where's my regular? So to tighten those jam nuts, that's just, you just use a screwdriver. And just push it on there. It's just a little nut there that will tighten it against that inside. That's good. Now that is a proper extension cord head there that could be that, that'll last you a lifetime look at that isn't that nice 
man, you guys, it's, you know, I don't know what it, what it is about these things, but it's just something about it. Having four plugs at the end of it that are good quality plugs is so nice that you can plug into without having to grab it with two hands. You know, it's just handy having that one handed plug. Everything's all, it's always oriented up when it's on the ground, so you can always get at it. And plus, you you know, you're not stuck with one. How many times did you get multiple cords out or try to find the, you know, a, a triplet end uh, that's always, you know, some one more thing to keep track of. But that there is nice. Okay, let's real quickly put the other end in, then we'll uh, test it and talk about its use here. These guys are simple. It's pretty much the same. And then uh, what do we have here? We got the silver, which is the white our neutral, and finally our black, which is our hot, which goes to gold. Friends, we have ran into a bit of a snag because I, uh, well, because I don't plan things out very well. This uh, doesn't fit. <laughs> Strain reliever, but I got to looking at it and it almost looks like um, whoever designed this may have uh, accounted for uh, professional homeowners. <laughs> <laughs> in that uh, that is easily removable. Look at that right there. Let's take that over to the grinder, knock that down a little bit, maintain that nice arch, and then we'll have a nice, perfectly designed strain reliever. It almost looks like it could... Look at that! <laughs> oh, it's the little things, right? <laughs> now we're cooking. Now we have, uh, now we got plenty of, uh, plenty of area. I wonder why that was there. That's clever. Huh. All right, let's test our mega cord out here. Make sure that we did everything right. Looks good. Yeah, I don't know if a guy's gonna use this all the time, but I mean, co contractors, you I mean, you live and die by your phone. You gotta have it charged. And it's just an, just an added bo benefit, you know, convenience, uh, that you're, cause you're always gonna have a power cord out uh, that you can plug into without a power brick on it right there. And of course we're charging there. You could charge, you know, most everything. I'd like to see these things eventually come out with a USB-C. So if you could have a regular USB and maybe a USB-C in there, that would be really the ticket. So why? Why go to all the trouble when you can just buy a normal extension cord? Well, all of the reasons why uh, that I explained earlier, uh, but you know, one thing with shops and a lot of you guys are working out of garages. Goodness, I have even been in times in my life where I was living in an apartment where I couldn't, didn't have a garage or shop and I rented a storage unit. Uh, and I painted a car in a storage unit one time <laughs> and did all the auto body. You know, I, I worked in there, but I remember that one, that there was no electrical in there uh, except for uh, one light bulb up in there. And I got one of those adapters and plugged my extension cord up in there. And I had something similar to this and I had a four ganger uh, and I was able to, to, to work in there. So if you have a situation like that or an older house with a smaller garage and you don't want to go to the aggravation of wiring the whole thing or maybe you don't use it all that time, you, know, you can make up something like this and, and set it on your bench and now you've got four plugs. Now just because you've got four plugs and big fat cable does not, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to run you know, everything off of it. You're still limited by the circuit breaker which is going to be you know, 15, 20 amps most likely. But it just gives you the ability, usually if you're working by yourself like I do, you might have um, a jigsaw and a skill saw uh, and you're, you're not using things at the same time, right? So this is, this is for, the, for the professional homeowner here, not for the contractor. You're going to have multiple guys on one cord. It's not going to do that, right? But it just gives you an option. Or you may decide you want to hang it, right? And you've got one plug or the plug's not in a convenient spot to where your workbench is. Uh, there's no reason why you can't, you know, hang this up from a rafter and have that hang down and have it access or even better yet, guy might even take a, I thought what a great idea is if you could get a, like a really powerful rare earth magnet, mount that on the back. Now you can clunk it on the side of your toolbox or anything metal, uh, just an added, kind of an added convenience. And, and it's going to pick up all of the metal shavings and every time you, yeah. Maybe that's not a good idea having the magnet on there. Uh, but that's it. That is the, um, that is the professional grade homeowner, <laughs> professional homeowner grade mega extension cord uh, power adapter uh, USB plugger. <laughs> that's, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, may God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you guys on the next video.